Last time we looked at using ChatGPT to code an app for us. Uh, this time I wanted to see how realistic it is to get an AI to design a mobile application. So I kept seeing concept designs like this around Twitter and wanted to see how much effort it would be to turn one of these AI generated concepts into an actual usable application. So I created an account for Midjourney, which is one of the image generating AIs. I dusted off my favorite tech stack for building mobile apps and I got to work. So first I needed the design concepts and assets from Midjourney. So using Midjourney is pretty simple. You can use it directly through a Discord bot. You just type slash imagine and then the prompt you want to use. So you can type whatever you like here as long as it's PG and it will generate an image for you. But the prompt you use is important if you want decent results. So as someone who has never used Midjourney before, I didn't really know what prompts work best. But fortunately, the person showcasing their concepts on Twitter also provided the prompt they used. So I just fed that into Midjourney with some tweaks of my own. So scrolling through my message history with Midjourney should give you a bit of a sense of the process here and what I did whilst experimenting with it. So after prompting Midjourney, it will initially give you four concepts to choose from. And these are usually generated within 30 seconds or so. So if you like one of these, you can choose the corresponding option down here to upscale it into a larger version, or you could select one and create more variations of that image. And once you have picked one that you like, you also have the option of upscaling it even further. So after playing around for a while, these are the set of assets I ended up deciding to create the app with. And I also generated some icon sets I could use, including an app store icon as well. So next up was turning all this stuff into an actual application. The big downside of the assets I generated, as opposed to what I would get from working with an actual designer or purchasing assets from a marketplace, is that all I have to work with are concept images. I don't have individual graphics and icons separated out into their own files. Although it's certainly awkward, this didn't prove to be too much of a challenge. So what I did was just crop out the graphical asset I wanted like this, then I would feed this image into some kind of tool for removing backgrounds automatically. So Adobe has a free tool you can use online, but I actually found this remove.bg site worked better for me generally. And I just repeated this process whenever I needed to extract some asset from the concept images. So the first step I took in actually building the mobile application was creating the color palette. So Ionic have this nice color generator tool that allows you to supply some colors and it will generate theme variables that you can just paste into your app. So all I did here was bring up my concept images and pick a few different colors from them to create my color palette. So with my graphical assets in hand and a color palette sorted, most of the rest of the work was just the general process of putting together a user interface with Ionic. So you can check out my other content or even my ionicstart.com course in the description if you are interested in learning how to actually build with Ionic and Angular. But this is a quick overview of what I did. So I wasn't aiming to replicate one particular image 100%. Uh, this wouldn't make much sense because there are weird little artifacts in most of the images. So I actually had a bunch of the images that I generated up for reference and I took the elements I liked from each of them when putting the application together. So I just have a few separate components here for the different sections of the application. And you can see that I am utilizing the images that I have generated from Midjourney. So after about two hours of work, I had created what we are now looking at on the right hand side of the screen here. So it's still a little bit rough, but this is an actual working application now. It doesn't actually do anything yet, but the interface is all coded up. I can interact with this search bar. I can click on the various buttons. I can you know, scroll down and this is a real list and I could link this up to other pages if I wanted to. So basically we've been able to successfully take that theme concept from Midjourney and turn it into a working application. And if you are interested in the actual code for all of this, I'll have a link to the source code in the description. So one thing I ran into trouble with was this uh, hero image here. As you can see, this is different from the image in the source concept that I was using. So in this initial render, this hero image was just a small part of a much larger image. And I found that even after upscaling, this foliage image was too small and was resulting in a low quality blurry image when I used it in the app. So what I did was pass in the existing image in a new prompt to mid journey so that it would keep the same general style 
And then rather than asking it to create a mobile app UI, I asked for it to just generate just the foliage. So then I had a full size image that I could use and I utilized the same process of passing it through the background remover tool and then I used it in the app. And I also generated a similar image for uh, the footer image here as well. So do I think this is a realistic way to design an application? Uh, surprisingly, yes, uh, at least with the skill set I have and what I'm trying to do. I can easily see myself using this as the primary way I design applications, even in its current form today. And even though I am completely new to mid journey, I am definitely sure that I could utilize this tool a whole lot better than I am right now. So I'm going to talk specifically about the four big benefits of this for me, just using this as a tool in my tool belt. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what this might mean for designers more broadly, because I don't know, and it's not an industry I'm really part of. So for me, this is why I like this. So I'm generally okay at design, uh, but not good enough really to come up with impressive designs myself. I usually end up being stuck buying existing assets from graphics marketplaces like Envato, uh, but there is always just a limited amount of options and often none are quite what you want. With Midjourney, the possibilities are endless and I can keep iterating until I find something I'm happy with. Another thing is that the assets are unique. If you buy graphical assets like I often do, you are using assets that are already being used by many other people as well. The licenses are less restrictive, uh, although there are some exceptions and they have stated their terms may change. At the moment, Midjourney states that you basically own all assets you create using Midjourney's image generation and chat services. So generally items bought from marketplaces only allow for use in one project unless you pay a lot more. And it also allows for consistency in creating new assets. So on a marketplace, I might find a set of icons I like, but I need more in the same style and they just aren't available. With Midjourney, I can feed in an image as a base and keep getting it to generate new assets until I have the assets I want. So there are obviously some downsides here too, like the fact that it is a bit random. Uh, it involves a bit of trial and error. You are never going to get exactly what you want. And often there are strange artifacts in the end results. But for me, this is good enough as it is. And I expect that this will continue to get better. I imagine that being able to auto export a set of icons or other graphical assets already with a transparent background will be something that will be possible soon. All right, that's it from me today. Uh, I know this is a hugely polarizing and interesting topic. So if you have thoughts to share and discuss, please feel free to leave a comment. And if you found this video interesting, even if you're not so keen on this whole AI taking over the world thing, uh, a like or subscribe before you go would be much appreciated. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you for the next video.